This press conference assembled in late September in Monaco. On the papers in front of them, the latest knowledge to best adapt to what is changing in our climate, specifically about oceans and the cryosphere, places on the planet where water is in solid form, glaciers, icebergs, and frozen ground. And if Atlantic Canada shares just one thing in common with Monaco, it is that they are both surrounded by vast open water. So this report has information that impacts us Oceanside communities directly. And our Main Street Halifax team assembled a group of well-known people to read excerpts from the report. We recorded them and played them back for Boris Varm, an ocean scientist and Dalhousie University professor. And in his straightforward and matter-of-fact way, Boris helped us understand the depths and the tone of the science behind the report. All people on Earth depend directly or indirectly on the ocean and cryosphere. The ocean has absorbed about a third of the carbon dioxide humans have emitted from the burning of fossil fuels since the Industrial Revolution. It is virtually certain that the global ocean has warmed unabated since 1970 and has taken up more than 90% of the excess heat in the climate system. Since 1993, the rate of ocean warming has more than doubled. Well, first I have to respond as a human being, not so much as a scientist, because, you know, this is so much bigger than any of us. The sense of urgency is, is overwhelming to me. Um, this is bigger than Canada. This is bigger than any political party. This is bit, bigger than any faith group. It's bigger than humanity. It's, it's three quarters of our planet that are uh, part of the oceans or cryosphere. Ocean ecosystems are threatened globally by three major climate change-induced stressors. Warming, loss of oxygen, and acidification. Open ocean surface pH has declined by a range of 0.017 to 0.027 pH units per decade since the late 1980s, with a decline in surface ocean pH very likely to have already emerged from background natural variability for more than 95% of the ocean surface area. This makes the water more corrosive for marine organisms that build their shells and structures out of mineral carbonates, such as corals, shellfish, and plankton. The ocean on average is about 26% more acidic now than it was a few decades ago. Now, if our pH in our blood would drop as much as the ocean pH has changed, we would be already quite sick. It's called acidosis. Small changes um, can, be, um, can make you sick. The one thing that was hidden in there that I thought was profound was that it said that the oceans have emerged from the natural state, 95% of the ocean emerged. What they mean by that is that 95% of the ocean with respect to its acidity is already in an unnatural state that's outside of the variability that the ocean has seen over the past centuries and millennia. So the ocean already is in a fundamentally new state with, with respect to its acidity, at least 95% of it. If human impacts on the ocean continue unabated, declines in ocean health and services are projected to cost the global economy $428 billion per year by 2050 and $1.979 trillion per year by 2100. I think what also made me somewhat hopeful about the IPCC report, despite all the gloom and doom, is that the difference between the two scenarios, the, the scenario of doing absolutely nothing and the scenario of doing a whole lot soon, is enormous. Uh, with respect to sea level rise and acidity, they actually had the most, um, the strongest effects, positive effects of, of concerted action. So um, again, it's not a done deal. And we're, we're wide-eyed, we're, we're looking into this and we know what's coming and we know the difference between acting and not acting.